Dear beloved, as we continue with the lockdown and our journey um, through this Easter season, we connect once again to reflect on how the resurrection power renews us to recognize Jesus by faith through repentance. And we read today from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 12, verses 38 to 42. And as usual, then I'd ask you to um, light a candle or switch on the lights um, to remind us that in the dark moments of the COVID-19, we are not alone. God is with us and um, God remains the light and he will give light to the scientists and the doctors to find the vaccine um, for this uh, pandemic. But also he is the light that will keep us in good company in moments of our loneliness and despair. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of all moments, God of all seasons, God of all humanity. We come before you trusting in your mercy and your love, knowing that there's nothing that surpasses that. It is the very thing that we need in our lives to know that we are loved beyond measure that when we look even at the coronavirus, we may know that compared to you, O oh God, you died for us. We did not die. And so we are such special people to you, and you conquer death, just as you are going to conquer this monster that is threatening lives day in and day out. And so... We bring our hearts, we bring our souls, we bring our bodies, we bring everything to you tonight so that we can feel your presence for your God who reveals yourself to us. And we thank you for that. We don't want to hide from you as we are hiding from the COVID-19, but we want to open our hearts and open ourselves to your presence, oh God. Come and be with us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I now read from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 12, verses 38 to 42. Then some teachers of the law and some Pharisees spoke up. Teacher, they said, we want to see you perform a miracle. How evil and godless are the people of this day, Jesus exclaimed. You ask me for a miracle. No, the only miracle you will be given is the miracle of the prophet Jonah. In the same way that Jonah spent three days and nights in the big fish, so will the Son of Man spend three days and nights in the depths of the earth. On Judgment Day, the people of Nineveh will stand up and accuse you because they turned from their sins when they heard Jonah preach. And I tell you that there is something here greater than Jonah. On Judgment Day, the Queen of Sheba will stand up and accuse you because she traveled all the way from her country to listen to King Solomon's wise teaching. And I assure you that there is something here greater than Solomon. And so what do we make of this passage this week? We may want to accuse the Pharisees for wanting a sign. But the reality is that 
they have noticed what Jesus is doing. But they are not sure whether he is the one. We live in a world of things happening around us. Some of them seem to be convincing. So the Pharisees are not sure. The many false prophets around us. The many promises that are being made. There are many magicians. There are many constars around us. And so the Pharisees are looking for a sign. They are looking for something that's going to give them the certainty that he is the one. Probably they are tired of being pulled by this one and that one claiming that they are the Messiah. And so what is it that gives you the assurance that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Savior? Jesus then says to the Pharisees, it is enough for them to believe in him. For the resurrection is that sign that he is the one. And so in this period of the resurrection, we're invited then to reflect deeply on who we think Jesus is. That this power of the resurrection may help us to connect better with God. Jesus says to them, the only sign you will get is that of Jonah, who spent three days in the belly of the fish, and he will spend three days in the belly of the earth, and come out still alive. And I'm wondering if are there no signs of you having come out of a very difficult situation and you don't know how and yet you've come out stronger? Isn't that a sign that God is with you? Why look for more signs from others instead of looking at what God is doing in your life? And so the passage today invites us to look carefully at what God is doing in our lives. One of the signs that we may know for sure that God is at work in our lives is when we are able to trace our lives to the point of repentance where we are able to say, this is who I used to be and this is who I am today. These are the things that I used to do and these are the things that I am doing today. And so if you have had a moment of conversion in your life, if you've had a moment of realizing that the things that you used to do were foolish, perhaps then God is at work in your life. You don't need any more signs. The people of Nineveh knew that God is with them when they repented and they continued to live. From God promising disaster to God giving them life. Could it be that the mere fact that God has given you life and life in its fullness, that you have peace within you, that you have joy, that you have so much faith in God is a sign that God is with you. And so don't discount those moments of your repentance. There are a sign that God is with you. We live in a world that looks for the outlook and all the other things out there. The scripture today invites us to go deep into our hearts and examine our character, examine our habits, 
and discover the change that God has effected in each one of us. That's the sign we need. Some people have repented because of God's word that has been preached to them. Queen Sheba goes to Solomon to listen to the wise teachings of Solomon. And Jesus says, my teachings are far better than those of Solomon. Indeed, Jesus teaches us things that seem difficult and yet he just simplifies them. Unlike the Pharisees who teach people for life to be complicated, Jesus' teachings simplify life. And this is how Jesus simplifies life. He teaches us two things. He says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And so it is the love of God that makes us realize that we are God's children. It is not even the fact that we have first loved God, but that love for God is our response to how God has loved us. And so if you have a sense of God having loved you, of God loving you deeply in your life, even to the point of God dying for your sins, if you have a sense of God losing his life so that you can gain yours, then you can respond to God's love. Jesus teaches us not in words, but Jesus teaches us with his very life. That's how much he loves us. And I pray to God that you will recognize today how much God loves you. Jesus teaches us, secondly, that love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's as simple as all that, learning to love others. And if, you, if you're ever moved by the plight of others, perhaps then God is with you. You don't need any other sign. You have this essence of God within you. This God who loves, not because he has been loved first, but this God who expresses love in ways that surprise us, that amaze us. If your life, therefore, is a gift to others, Perhaps then that's the sign that God is with you. You don't need any other sign. And so the resurrection power helps us, therefore, to act in a manner that makes us to be God's children. And being God's child is then to act in a manner that is like that of Christ. And so, won't you then look for ways in which you can love others? So that then your life becomes a sign to others. Sometimes people are looking for a sign because even those of us who call themselves God's children are not the light that the people are looking for. Jesus said, you are the light of the world and that's who we need to be and that's what we need to be to the world. And so, won't you then, just like Jesus, allow your life to be a sign that God uses. People need not look very far when you are here. And so my prayer, my good friend, is that you, you will know that Jesus is the one. That through faith, repentance may be a sign that God is with you. That he is the one. 
that through what God has done in your life, you would have no doubt that he is the one. That through faith, you would serve others so that they too may know that God is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Messiah. And so the Savior is here with us. No need for a sign. For God has already given us the sign. The love with which he has loved us. How God allows us to be better people. And how God uses us is a sign that God loves us and Jesus has been raised so that we may have life and have it in its fullness. May God bless you. Let's be quiet for a moment. Lord God, may you use these moments for us not to live with fear and anxiety, but to use this time to reflect on your love for us, to reflect on who we have become because of your love, to reflect on who we can be to others because of your love. And thank you for, for giving us opportunities to represent you, to be an expression of, of who you are. And give us the courage then to do these things well, to the glory of your name. Thank you for touching our lives, but equally, thank you for calling us to go and touch other lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.